Welcome everybody to another Learn Squared live stream. You got Nick with Learn Squared here. I'm joined by Mr. Lewis Carrasco. Welcome, Lewis, to the show. Hello, it's good to be back. It's good to have you back. And guys, you know what's even what's the best is that today we are launching Lewis's course. So it's finally here. Yeah. It is a celebration. Post some hearts, post some stars, post some hype related emojis in that chat because it is finally the day. Rethinking Weapon Design is available on the Learn Squared website right now. So you can go to learnsquared.com, you can check it out for yourself, and you can pick up that early bird discount if you, uh, if you get it quick. So uh, go check out the uh, Learn Squared site, check out Rethinking Weapon Design for yourself. And we got a really exciting show for you today to celebrate the launch of the course. So in addition to celebrating that launch, we're going to be talking all about the course itself. We're going to be answering your questions, anything you want to know, anything that might help you to get in that rethinking weapon design headspace, ask away in the chat. Lewis is here to answer your questions. And uh, we're going to be showing off the trailer to anybody who doesn't know about the course. I think that's a pretty good way to explain uh, everything in one nice little package. And on top of all that, the most exciting thing is that Lewis is back to actually do another live demonstration. So uh, anybody who hasn't seen our previous, our announcement stream, Lewis did a live demo where he created a bunch of incredible designs for different kinds of grenades. And today I hear that Lewis has a new idea for what to do concept designs for. It's not grenades this time, Lewis. Do you want to talk about no, what you're going to do? Yeah, uh, I was thinking about trying out some cannons, like a variety of cannons. Let's see. Let's see what we can come up with. I'm excited. Cannons, I'm down. I, I'm excited to see what you come up with. So we got a lot to look forward to on today's show. You guys are going to see a whole bunch of live art being made. You can ask your questions, but let's kick things off first by taking a look at that course trailer. So we'll be right back. Enjoy. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real-life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Guys, rethinking weapon design. You just saw the trailer right there. Lewis, there's a lot going on in this course. This is amazing. Can you tell us a little overview of what this course is about? Yeah. Uh... So it's pretty much, I, I wanted to create a course that broke down how I've learned to design after being on so many projects, both in film and game. Yeah, and you know, it, it's interesting because a lot of this stuff is really informed by professional workflows and professional timelines and, and all that stuff. Like, can you talk about how this has really helped you in a professional sense, this, this workflow that we're seeing? Yeah, you know, I think I spent a lot of my younger years in the industry uh, trying to keep up with all the pretty rendered images that I saw on ArtStation and, and other forums. So uh, I eventually figured out a way using a combination of all these different methods to uh, sketch out designs a lot faster. So that way I could just have more fun and relax and just enjoy the process. And so I really wanted to show that off in a tutorial. So... You guys uh, at home are seeing on your screens right now uh, a slideshow of all the different deliverables that Lewis created for this course. There's a, a lot of different weapons that were um, created and finalized for the course. Lewis even added 
after the main part of the course, added an epilogue chapter where he branched out. As you can see from all these pictures, these are all sort of bladed weapon examples where he, he chose one category of weapon to really focus in on so that it could demonstrate all the, the lessons of the course. And then after that part, there's like an epilogue where he goes into branching out into different kinds of weapons. So there's like uh, uh, pistols and rifles and all, all kinds of different like scales of weapons and stuff. So that's pretty exciting as well. Uh, you made a lot of stuff for this course, Lewis. What was that like? How, how, how was the process of making the course? Yeah, you know, it was, um, I think with, with this process, my intention is usually just to like design one or two things, but, uh, and you'll see uh, when you check out the tutorial that it's very easy to start branching off and generating all kinds of ideas and getting really excited about creating new things and, and really uh, expressing yourself and what you can come up with and, and that's what happened. And, and that's why there's so much in the tutorial. And, and that's why, you know, I also really wanted to demo the process again for you all live. There you go, ladies and gents, a lot of content for you. So the course is broken up into sort of, uh, you're going to be learning all the techniques and even doing some uh, really nice, like uh, uh, pre-packaged content. Lewis actually created some templates that you can work on before you create the entire weapon, there's templates that like include the hilt of the sword so that you can just focus on making a cool blade. And there's all sorts of great stuff in this course. You're going to love it, you guys. Once again, Rethinking Weapon Design is available right now on the Learn Squared site. So we're celebrating that launch with this stream today. You can see the link up on the top of your screens right now. Uh, you can pick it up on the Learn Squared site. It is totally fully available. Now, uh, I want to say before we jump into the demo, Let's say hi to some of these amazing people in the chat. We have who was camped out since apparently four days ago, Nebula Oblivion, who posted a message in the uh, in the chat. Hey, just four days. Good stuff. I love to see the enthusiasm. And hey, we hope thanks. to see you in the chat uh, today, Nebula Oblivion. We have Randy Higgin in here saying hello. Tiago Militaus saying hello as well. Welcome, guys. Gerald Ballesteros, uh, welcome to the show, saying hi. Will this be available even after the live is finished? Because I might not be able to watch fully right now. And uh, that is a thing that's really important because it's very late at night for a lot of our friends overseas at the yeah. moment. So yes, absolutely, you can watch the whole show after it's done being live as well. Um, you know, you, you would miss out on some of opportunities to ask questions to Lewis. Uh, so definitely, if you have to go to sleep or something, get your questions in now. <laughs> But uh, yes, the whole show will be available after it is over uh, as like a regular YouTube video that you can watch afterwards. Another fun thing before we jump into the demo that I do want to let you guys know, uh, just like with the previous live stream, Lewis is actually locally recording all of the uh, process that he's doing on today's show. So that is going to become available in the course itself as bonus content. So you'll actually be able to, in addition to the uh, being able to see what he's creating on the live stream, You'll be able to see it totally uninterrupted without us cutting away or, or showing any graphics over it. You can really just uh, inspect everything that Lewis is doing in uh, his artwork creation. So that'll be really great. And that's even more content added to the course. So what could be better than that? Yeah. But, uh, you know, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into this demo here. Let's see what Lewis is working on. So, Lewis, we're going to jump over to your screen here and uh, we're going to we're going to just kind of let him take it away. We got the blank. The blank page, the toughest yeah. uh, thing for any artist to face. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so yeah, like we talked about, I'm going to be making some cannons. Um, I really, the only brief I have for myself is that it's going to be a cannon. That's the intention. Um, and that's it. You can see I have a variety of reference here. Just like, and it's all kind of like almost <laughs> random. <laughs> Can you explain some of these? Re so for anybody who hasn't seen our previous show, they may not be acquainted with some of the very... Uh, eclectic places you pull your references from so you say oh yeah i got some references here i got a what is this a bracelet i got a factory i got a you yes. know a syringe some syringe yeah um yeah so a lot of the a lot of the time what i do is i just look for interesting shapes i i don't assign it to any particular part of the design um whenever i've done that i just end up fighting the design the whole time trying to get something to fit so all i'm looking at is the light and the interesting shape like um, this uh, I mean this is probably rust but I'm viewing it as a pattern and also the highlights how they're broken up and how it looks like a cylinder which could be the front of this uh, or the main cannon 
Um, I, I, the straps look cool. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. Um, this could be the silhouette of my cannon for all I know. Um, like the way this jewelry is set, uh, I think it's really interesting. I have no idea what I would do with it, but I'm very curious to find out. Um, and yeah, so all of it is just uh, shapes that have lighting that I really like. Um, and also it can create a challenge for myself uh, when I start working on top of the silhouette and trying to create a canon using this specific reference. Um, it's kind of like uh, just figuring out a story as I go. Amazing. And it, it yeah. really is interesting that you not only are you using the reference really creatively, like you know, in the trailer, it shows like pulling some really uh, out there references to create things that are totally different. But what's fascinating to me is that you don't even know what it's going to be when you pull that reference in. You know, Seriously. a lot of artists would at least know like what it's going to be at the point of taking the reference into there. So that's really yeah, cool. Yeah. It's cool that you are so comfortable with um, not knowing, you know, what's going to happen, not knowing what you're going to be doing and uh, just kind of go in with the flow because that is a very kind of a scary part of the uh, of the process. Yeah, it absolutely is. And like this beginning, like throughout the entire time, I'm just trying to have fun. I don't want to like pressure myself to make something look the way like, for example, like it's a live demo. So the pressure would be to create uh, something that that looks exactly like a, a space cannon that you've seen in a lot of video games or something like that. But my intention right now is just to make something that catches my interest and that looks really cool the first time I look at it. So this silhouette here, uh, I'm just trying to make a cool silhouette. That's that's all I'm doing is making something that I've never seen before. Good stuff. And I'm sure I'm sure all of you, as you're looking at this, are wondering, how can that be a cannon? You're trying to see a <laughs> cannon as you look at it, right? And and that's the point. I'm doing the same thing. Happy accidents. Exactly, Randy Higgins. Happy accidents, I love yeah. that. So let's take a quick look. Let's kind of allow ourselves to be transfixed as Lewis creates these uh, amazing designs. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry about that. There we go. So um, we have two designs on screen right now. Can you talk us through your process of, uh, you know, I, I suppose this is for iterating, for keeping that in the corner to kind of have in the back of your mind and then working on something else? Yeah, because I'm not sure if this is the shape that, you know, this is the first silhouette I've done in this, in this, um, for this canon. So it's like, okay, is this the coolest thing? Um, let, let's see what else there is out there for me to work on. And I just want to fall in love with the silhouette and, and just see, you know, what direction I could take it in. I, uh, do you have any influences for, you know, any types of interesting canons that you've seen in the past, like that maybe inspired you? No, um, right now, I'll, like this, this is my inspiration, this right here. Oh, wow. And, and this shape too, because if I look at these as cannons or, you know, anything related to a cannon, that's my inspiration. Like this is a cannon. Obviously it's cylindrical, but I'm looking at this detail, this pattern right here. And I'm wondering how could that other than detail, how, how could this be? how could this area be like the wheels of the cannon? Like, how could I make that work? Um, and that's what I'm thinking about whenever I do this. Like, how could this shape be what powers the cannon? And, you know, first thing is like, oh, maybe this is where the energy is. But I challenge myself and I'm like, well, what if this is the area where the cannon shoots? Like, what if this is the front, the very front of the cannon? This is where the projectile comes out of. And that's all I'm thinking about. Wow. And once again, to anybody who's just uh, joining the show, what we're looking at here, we have a live demonstration from Lewis Carrasco, the instructor of our newest course. His course just came out today. It's called Rethinking Weapon Design. And you can find that on LearnSquared.com as we speak. We're celebrating the launch of the course right now with this live demo, with this interview. So anybody who has questions, I want to make it uh, very clear that you can post 
whatever questions you want to know about Lewis's uh, art style, about the uh, about the course itself, about previous artwork, career, any you know, let's say on topic question is fair game. So make sure you post those in the comments. Anything you want to know while you're watching, and uh, let's all uh, let's all just enjoy the uh, the mastery on display in front of us here. This is amazing stuff. I recently went to um, in uh, Rome, went to the Leonardo da Vinci Museum and oh, cool. uh, saw a bunch of the, you know, he was crazy with building all these different things and he made a bunch of cannons that were oh, pretty, okay. uh, pretty out there. He apparently invented some kind of uh, a tank that shoots in every direction at once. Uh, yeah, with sounds like, like him. 12 <laughs> different cannons. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it yeah. ever worked, but uh, yeah, it was a good idea. Still cool. Yeah, still cool. <laughs> He he that I think that there is some Leonardo da Vinci uh, DNA on display here where yeah, the, right? the, the really out there ideas. <laughs> so um just to know, um you know, originally I was thinking maybe this is I'm gonna rotate these to be the profile view and of the canon, but now when I look at this, I'm like, oh, maybe this is like the top down view of the canon. And uh, that's why I'm trying to make more of an interesting silhouette um and this too like maybe this is the top of the cannon and we're looking down at it and and this is just the profile view of the cannon so i'm still like constantly uh trying to figure out what part it could be what perspective i'm looking at it um always kind of like exploring is there anything that you uh it, like has there ever been a client who asked you to do a particular type of weapon or a prop or anything that you felt like you know i actually don't have any ideas for this you know and you really had to kind of think outside the box for uh you know further than what you usually do where you say like oh no I don't, i'm not i don't feel confident in this one and how did you overcome um, that yeah you know all the time and uh <laughs> i would definitely say all the time but i think what became the solution was figuring out why I was getting stuck. And this process was a, was ended up being my answer to those problems. So now when I'm given a task, I think, okay, what's the simplest way I could design this? And um, so I started uh, working with silhouettes and a lot of photo textures because I realized when I was in 3D, I could, I could build everything in 3D and stuff like that. And that was fine, but the designs were always just boring. And I realized I was just relying on, on the 3D just to answer all of my questions. And um, I wasn't spending enough time with the uh, design. So once I started working with this method, I could spend time doing exactly what I'm showing you all now. And uh, it, it really let me explore my imagination. And once I started doing that, I just became excited by every task because I would have no idea how I was gonna pursue it, but um, I would have fun pursuing it and I would eventually come up with something that would trigger the imagination of like my coworkers and my coworkers would see something that I didn't see and it just became exciting. So a lot of it was figuring out where I wasn't having a good time in the process. And just to be clear too, that this is not to say anything against the idea of designing, you know, using 3d or anything like that. Like Lewis, you, uh, you do use 3D still in your workflow. Uh, heavily, heavily, yeah. Yeah, quite a but bit. But this, what we are seeing here is a way of really loosening up and allowing yourself to come up with like ideas that would not otherwise be necessarily come to mind. And Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm glad you said that because, um, yeah, I, I heavily, I, I definitely use a lot of 3D. It's just, um, I was focusing too much on starting out in 3D. And I think those of you that have tried it know that feeling when you realize how much you have to build in 3D. So um, yeah, I just had to find that place where I just need, gave myself time to be as creative as I could without any kind of judgment of like the rendering or anything like that. And, and that's when I started doing this. Yeah, and it, it just really seems to encourage very, very fast iteration. I mean, faster than you could do in 3D, faster than you could even really do in 2D with like sketching, uh, yeah. considering the amount of 
instant detail that you're getting from the photo bashes a lot of time or from the uh, photo textures rather yeah uh, it's it's lending you like simultaneous really quick um the ability to create designs really quickly that you wouldn't have thought of but also to imbue them with a lot of detail and and lighting information exactly yeah it, it just really helps me understand what this thing looks like immediately um i used to draw from scratch quite a bit and then uh, I, I remember i took a workshop and it, like a creature workshop and we had to sculpt out uh, a character and we took like i think a day to design the uh creature and I, and I started sculpting right away the next day. But when I got down to the hands, I actually spent like two days on the hands. Then the instructor came up to me and he asked me if I knew why I was taking so long on the hands. <laughs> and uh, I said, I didn't know why. And he says, it's because you don't know what they look like. <laughs> so, uh, because it was the only thing I didn't draw. And so uh, he had been teaching me how to push my designs, but... Yeah, when I sat down and drew out the hands, everything went so quickly and I finished it immediately. So I kind of always think about that when I'm doing this process or sketching, because there's there was a stage when I would do final paintings or building in 3D, I would realize that the parts I slowed down in were the areas that I didn't finish. So now when I sketch, I really try to answer those questions. So is there a part of I let's uh let's kind of take people through what is in this course um and I suppose that part of it I I can explain where we talked about how the the uh, course is split into two sort of major sections where the first one is more about first learning the workflows that you utilize and uh yeah. giving everybody ideas of how to look for photo texture reference and how to get inspired by other artists and you know the best practices and all that stuff uh, and then it sort of culminates in that first lesson um, with practical um, practical homework where you're actually building you know your first few designs utilizing these techniques um, with some with some help so I, I think that's really cool too that you're you're actually providing the students in the first lesson with um, templates so that they don't have yeah. to go all the way right from the beginning. You know, they, they can start with a template that has part of the design made and they can kind of just like finish that design and just work on, worry about doing one aspect of the design. Um, can you talk about like what you uh, created for those templates and how you decided on, uh, you know, how to do them? Yeah, so the main reason why the templates are there is because the, any new process is going to be intimidating. Like I used to watch tutorials and I still do all the time, but there's this point where it's very intimidating to start because there's so much ahead of you. So we really wanted to uh, start getting you in the habit of finishing something. So that's why it's partially finished for you, like the hilt's done for you. So when you start working on the blade, You'll, you'll notice immediately you're trying to just get a blade that fits with that hilt and then you can create multiple versions off of that. And, um, but what's going to happen is you'll start to realize that you're finishing a design because part of it's already done. You have a direction, you finish it and you start building that healthy habit of finishing something rather than starting something and not knowing if you're finishing or not. And then, so going from that, now that the student has you know, created their, it feels confident in using this photo texture technique, feels confident thinking outside the box and, and gathering references that, you know, such as this one that you're using right now that you wouldn't necessarily associate with the type of weapon that you're creating. Yeah. Um, now that they feel com confident with that, the second half of the course uh, in the next lesson goes over um, really digging into the different sort of methodologies you can use with this workflow. So uh, the course actually, uh, that, that second lesson of the course is split into multiple sections, one of them dealing with doing a first, just working on a complete weapon design. So designing the entire thing without a template. 
And then once the student is comfortable with that, uh, you know, they do their homework for that. They feel comfortable with that. After that, they go into um, the next thing, which is focused on reusing the previous weapon in a new weapon, which I think yeah. is a really cool idea. So can you talk about that concept and how that's helped you? Yeah, so, you know, you're spending so much time rendering certain areas, but you'll get to a point where, hey, you know, I really like the lighting and the way I rendered, like, the front of this cannon when it's finished. And you already have, like, three more ideas for what the back end could look like, but you really like that front end, and maybe you could tweak it and add some more uh, photo reference on top of it you'll end up saving a ton of time just by copying and pasting it because it's something you painted, right? And it looks original already. You just tweak it a little bit, change the whole back end, and then you end up creating a whole new design and you, and you cut down. It's it's just like when you started with the hilt in the previous lesson and you just have to change the front part of the blade. Uh, and, and that's how the whole tutorial is kind of connected, right? Where um, you're, already in, you're, you're starting to build a habit of finishing but then when you get to that point where you finish your first painting, you realize that you could do another like two designs off of it. And so once the student has, um, you know, feels confident now, not only finishing a design using this workflow, but also creating other designs using that design, um, the kind of culmination of that idea is to then try to create asymmetrical designs, which of course, can be a little trickier than uh, the what had come before that, which was all uh, symmetrical, you know, swords and blades and, and things like that. So can you talk about the the um, asymmetrical aspect and, and how that might be more of a challenge? Yeah, so if if I were to start with this canon in a symmetrical perspective, you see how the silhouette is very broken up. Like there are a lot of negative shapes. See all the white space being negative shapes? It, it's very complex and there's a lot of things that factor into this. What I wanna do is get excited about what I'm gonna work on. So that's why in this image, I'm just gonna work symmetrically. And then what I could always do is I could, again, since this is a top view, I could always you know, copy the top of this and rotate it to a horizontal view. And this will be the side perspective of my cannon. And I could just put some wheels here and then it'll, it'll look just like this, but I'm just trying to make things as easy as possible for myself. So in the tutorial, I kind of go over how you can work symmetrically and then break off and do something symmetrical. So that way I, I feel like as humans, you know, we just naturally gravitate towards patterns. And I just want to I just want to stay in that realm. So that's why we kind of cover that in the tutorial. Yeah, and so it really does give you the best of both worlds where you can design something uh, with symmetry and then break things off of that. And and a lot of the uh, first students who you know saw that uh, slideshow earlier, I'll actually cut back over to it. So uh, in this slideshow of these different weapons, a lot of the ones like in the on the left side, on the right side, that are asymmetrical those were originally designed with symmetry and then removed even the axes um, that you see on screen here these despite being completely asymmetrical the original silhouettes were actually designed with symmetry and then split um, in half and sort of manipulated to uh to create that asymmetrical look so there's really it creates it gives you a lot of options um, with the way that you create your art. And then, so, of course, after all that, you know, having all of these different styles that you're then confident with, of course, the course itself, as people saw in that slideshow, is utilizing blades to demonstrate the technique, but it applies to anything. So, you know, blades are uh, easy to comprehend and they're, you know, a little bit more uh, rigid and, and hard surface and stuff, but the technique itself works really on anything. So uh, what what we ended up having at the end of the course was that Lewis added the extra chapter of like epilogue content where it's, you know, the idea is still um, expressed that like, yes, you could really do all these, uh, you could do anything with these techniques, but here's a bunch of examples of things you could do. And then, you know, 
Lewis just really jumps into uh, all different kinds of like sci-fi things that you could do in addition to the the blades. So, and then there's a bunch of homework for that. So, students really get a chance to just experiment with all different kinds of things. There's there's so much content to uh, to absorb in this course. But having said that, it's it's really not. Uh, it, it, there's so much knowledge in the course, but it, it's expressed in a very surprisingly like a uh, short amount of time, which I think is really impressive in terms of like being a teacher. <laughs> like that's that's very hard to do. It's, that's a uh, really commendable. Um, so yeah, I, I I really think that uh, that the course gives like a, a very uh, a strong overhead view of all the different aspects of Lewis's art style and Lewis's uh, techniques uh, that uh, that are used for his art. So, the, you know, anybody who's joining the show right now who might not know what we're talking about, what we're doing on today's show, we are celebrating the release of Lewis Carrasco's brand new Learn Squared course. This is Rethinking Weapon Design. And what you're seeing on your screens right now, this is a live demonstration with the instructor of the course, Louis Carrasco, who is doing a brand new concept design, trying to rethink the uh, design for a cannon. So Louis is creating some amazing, really, really out there ideas for how a cannon would look, creating it with um, all of the techniques that are used in the course itself. So you guys can find Lewis's brand new course on the Learn Squared site right now, learnsquared.com. You can see it at the bottom of your screens there. Go check it out for yourselves, guys. And of course, if you have any questions for Lewis about the art style, about the course itself, about workflows, about um, you know professional uh, career advice, anything like that that you want to know, make sure you uh, post it in the chat, ask away. Uh, you know, Lewis is here to answer any of your questions. But while we, uh, while we wait here, uh, you know, now that I've mentioned that, it's probably a good idea to simply show the course trailer. So let's take a look at the course trailer and we will be right back with more demonstration. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real-life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstractions cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Guys, Rethinking Weapon Design, as you just saw in that trailer, is available right now on the Learn Squared site. So go check it out. You can get the early bird discount as well because you will be an early adopter of the course. So. That's another reason to go check out the course right now. Don't miss it. The Tell Productions, welcome to the show. Uh, looks super cool. I like the sort of kit bash approach. And yeah, that is uh, really the, the heart and soul of this technique is the, the, the method that Lewis calls photo texturing and utilizing all of these different uh, photo textures to instantly create detail and create interest and sort of get you out of your designing comfort zone. So um, can you go through again, Lewis, and just sort of tell us about some of the photo textures that you've utilized up to this point? Yeah, so like I mentioned before, I just grab anything that looks interesting. Like there's, um, 
there's no real direct intention. Like I don't know what it's going to be. So I just kind of want to challenge myself to create something using that reference. So, you know, initially, like if I, if I, when I first started out, if I were to look at this, I would say, oh, this is going to be an energy source or something like that. But then I might, but nowadays I'll probably challenge myself and say, okay, what if this is somehow the way the cannon shoots? Like this is related to that functionality that that we need to see. I don't know how it's going to work, but I want it to work. And I only grabbed this reference just because I thought it looked interesting. I thought the color and the lighting looked really cool. So it has nothing to do with the coils or anything like that. It, it really isn't. So a lot of this is just purely because of the light. I just really like the lighting. Now, um, I, you know, I've noticed that you utilize Pinterest a lot for your, you know, pulling photo textures. Uh, you use a lot of photos that, uh, you know, of various objects that uh, are from museums or from, you know, like uh, industrial things and things like that. Do you ever, you know, go out and, you know, you're at the beach or something, you bring a camera and just take photos of things that really spark your interest? Or do you do you focus more on, uh, you know, making sure that you can grab photos that have like perfect lighting and stuff like that? You know, I mostly focus on, I, I'm like not a photographer. And whenever I do take photos, I just take it to remind me of something. Um, I think on rare occasion, I'll really like the way a, a light is hitting an object. And uh, I don't know what it's for, but maybe I'll use it in the future. Um, I, I mostly prefer to use interest because I go down this like rabbit hole of images that have similar lighting or similar mood and it, it helps my um, imagination. So that's why I really utilize uh, Pinterest. Yeah, the rabbit hole is is a uh, is a blessing and a curse on social media. But I think on Pinterest that is a blessing, especially for artists. You can yeah. uh, you can really get a lot of inspiration and and pull a lot of great references that way, because that you know there and there's even a video in the course about the idea of you know how to most effectively use Pinterest for your for finding your references and you know when you kind of are explaining your philosophy behind this like rabbit hole approach um, and allowing yourself to be like sort of influenced in in a particular direction like oh okay i searched yeah. for daggers but now i saw this really cool idea where it looks like a saw blade or something so i'm gonna try and get more of those or you know like keep yeah, going in yeah. these weird directions and i i think that's a, a really useful part of the course is to help people sort of optimize their use of these platforms that they might already be using but not necessarily in the way that you do yeah i really wanted to cover all of that because when I started out I mean reference was always like every single teacher every professional they would always tell me to gather reference and I think I just never used reference the way maybe they do and a lot of the time I like for instance for instance if I had to design a canon I you know being a younger artist I would probably just google canon and try to change the silhouette of that canon but make sure it, it looked like you know, your traditional canon, and I would gather reference like, you know, something with like this, and I would add the detail to the barrel of the canon, or make the wheels look different or something like that. But it would always pretty much be that reference. Um, and I just wanted to show people how I decided to use reference. Yeah, uh, now that I've had some experience, how I can really use it to push my imagination as far as far as possible while staying in the same realm as the original reference i think that um something about using reference that can be tricky for people and you, you've kind of mentioned it um a, a little bit so far but um finding if you actually want to incorporate that reference into your picture uh, and take elements from it like like the way that your workflow of photo texturing works, it's really important to make sure that the lighting is at least a baseline close to what you're going for. And yeah. uh, I think it's really useful that in the course, you you actually do another specific video about like ensuring that 
you can match the lighting and like here's what to look for and here's what to avoid and you know patterns and lighting and all that stuff can you talk about some of the the things with reference you know outside of like the content you're searching for but just in terms of the technical aspects of the reference that uh can help or hinder uh students who are trying to learn this technique yeah you know I, i'm glad you brought that up because I, I can give you all an example now so usually I, I I've obviously practiced this quite a bit, but there are a lot of small pitfalls that I still fall into every now and then, but I figured out, eventually I figured out what exactly it was about reference that I needed to grab. So uh, let's take a look. You'll notice that a lot of the lighting in this reference is fairly neutral. Like none of it is really blown out in terms of lighting. Like this is blown out. So let me grab this and show you all what I'm talking about. If you grab an image, and I, and again, I go over this in a lot of detail because it does get very specific. Um, That's what people are looking for, right? They wanna, they wanna learn these techniques. Yeah, so you might run into this problem where th this image, you'll, you'll probably find an image that has very specific studio lighting that's like very bright, very contrasty. If you lower the opacity over your silhouette, you really don't get much out of it because the light is so blown out in these areas. And, and so this tube is like nothing, right? I mean, we have these two spheres here, but that's it. I mean, this pops out, but there's so much contrast that you really don't know how to use this image other than the silhouette. Like it's pretty much useless. It's a useless image. Now, let me show you a useful image to, to give you contrast. So let's see. Actually, I'll use one that I use in the demo. I always use this one. <laughs> so this image has everything that you kind of need. So there's enough bold detail. Uh, the hottest part of the image still isn't at, it's still not bright white. Oops, let me do this. It's still not bright white. Um, and there's still a lot of information inside of the image. So if I were to grab this, let's see, paste it a couple times and mirror it. Let's do that. Like I'm in, I'm in love because it has a top and a bottom. There's a direction to the light. So the light is coming from the top and there's a little bounce light at the bottom. Um, the rest is kind of ambient and there's some contrasty areas. So compare it to our pen here. Our pen doesn't have much going on. Let's make it black and white to make it easier to, to compare. See how there's like no information here? Like it's just black and then white and, and the detail is like very simple. It's just shiny. It's just a big shiny piece. And the detail here are just a bunch of vertical lines. Here we could see the depth, uh, we could see the highlights on the edges, uh, there's a gradient also going down, so that way we could kind of imply some depth when we hover over an image, so let's do that. So see, I lower the opacity and it's already informing the design. I already have a direction now, see how this curve, so now it implies depth, right? So if I turn it off, this is a flat silhouette. If I turn it on, this uh, piece here on the edge, is above uh, this piece, right? So now I'm thinking, okay, so that means this cannon um, comes out and it has layers now. So now I'm viewing it this way where it has spikes that come out. So now that's how I'm viewing this from the top down, Be just because of this photo reference. If I were to have used this um, pen, I would have nothing, right? I would just have, oh, okay, that's some weird noise in the front that kind of looks cool, but I actually don't know what it means or what it is. Maybe it has a bunch of barrels, that's cool. That's actually why I grabbed this reference, but in terms of actually practically using it, it does nothing for me the way this does. And also I can move this around, right? Look at that. Now I have an idea for the front. It and is that's like a it's yeah. like a window you're looking through to just visualize like like spark ideas. 
Exactly. You see how many options for cannons we're getting now just by doing this? Right? Yeah, that's really exciting. Yeah, you come up with like, and, and you know, you could duplicate the silhouette and apply, like there's no reason why you need to dislike decide right now. So I'll, I'll copy that texture and I'll copy the silhouette and then I'll, I'll move this to the way it was before. And that'll be my version one and my, and the previous way, this will be my version two. So now I could start coming up with like three or four concepts just from one uh, reference image. So one thing that we did on the previous live stream that I thought was really fun, um, we turned it to you guys in the chat to tell us what projects you're working on. And uh, I would love to hear what some of you guys are working on, or maybe you're not working on anything, but you're seeing what you're seeing what's happening on screen. You're saying, hey, I'm inspired to do a project right now. So tell us what you are either working on or what you are wanting to work on uh, after seeing today's show. We would love to hear it. Post that in the chat. We always love to hear about uh, everyone's projects. We have some great comments in the uh, in the chat there. Thank you guys for commenting. Randy Higgin in the chat is bringing up a great point. So uh, there are a lot of weapon designers out there who will try to keep the same look and feel as kind of like a signature look across all of the weapons that they make. And uh, what's your opinion on that, Lewis, uh, of like, keeping a signature feel versus sort of branching out and just making things that are totally different every time. Yeah, that is, that is a good point. So the, the whole point of this, uh, with the demo that I'm showing you now is to show you up how to show you how to come up with that original look. So we're giving myself, I'm giving myself all the freedom in the world to come up with an original idea. Uh, there's, there's really nothing specific to follow right now. Sometimes if I'm on a project, I'll have a, a few reference images of a look that belongs in like Gears of War or Halo, <laughs> Halo or something like that. And that will be the shape language I have to follow. So what I'll do is I'll explore all I want here and I'll always refer back to the previous, to, to the uh, look that I'm supposed to follow. And I'll make sure I hit certain things. Like for instance, if my goal is to follow one of these model kits, what I would do is make sure I would put um, enough hinges, enough uh, joints, um, wires coming out, a lot of greebles like this has. Like there are very specific things that make this look the way it does. So I would make sure to implement that in this design at a, at a future point. If I were to focus on it too much in the beginning, I would not be allowing myself to design. Um, and that's why I grabs a variety of reference. So like I'll grab this image, for instance, it's, it's some car reference. I'm definitely not a car guy, by the way. So I'm sure you guys know what this is. I have no idea. But for me, some kind of car can yeah. confirm. <laughs> but for me, this is like my halo uh, shapes, you know, because of the color and because of like the, the grooves in it. And it's so different than the other reference I've grabbed. Um, again, I would have that reference up and I would just try to keep it as close as I can. And once I established a look, even if it's a new look, I would always have the original uh, to reference and I would have the original reference that I used to get that look too. And so, I mean, just going through a couple of your previous projects and people heard about them in the trailer as well, but like if it's an established franchise like um let's say that it's like uh you know jungle cruise had a previous uh iteration or uh the vader uh vr game the star wars vr game or wrinkle yeah. in time or something like you're you're working towards particular targets that uh have already been set to some degree and so yeah. you're, you're utilizing that but for something like uh uh, when you're designing what the monster looks like in Quiet Place or helping to realize what that is, or, you know, some of the projects that don't have a pre-existing, uh, a pre-existing thing, though you're, you're kind of able to do a little bit more of like a blue sky technique, I suppose. And, it, you know, is there ever a point where you, you feel like you, you wish that you had 
uh, more creative freedom on a project or a any projects where you kind of snuck in some things that maybe they didn't expect you were going to put in there, but they ended up working really well? Uh, let's see. I mean, you know, it, it depends on the project you're working on. Like when you're working on in film, there's very specific looks you have to follow. There's a little leeway. Like, for example, uh, this Canon would already be designed, but maybe they have an issue with um, the front end and you could design the front end and then you could apply this technique to come up with options for them but you still have to stay within that realm. If it's like a full design um, and you have full full leeway, obviously you can come up with something original, but, you know, I think, I think usually in games, I'm given the most freedom to come up with something that's very, very original. The only thing that comes up is if I'm following a rig, I have to make sure I hit certain things. Like if I'm designing a creature or like, let's say it's this cannon, the cannon, the the rig has the wheels right here, and they cannot move. Um, and I have to remember that. But they could say like, "Hey, go crazy with everything else," and it's like, "Okay, no problem." Um, and they and they might say, "Hey, there's it just shoots one projectile." It's okay. I, I'll note that, and I'll just go crazy. And so, yeah, I, I can just do whatever I want. And I think that's like one of the funner things about working uh, in games, at least. And it's good to know that like you know, no matter how much kind of like pre-existing design has been established for a project, um, using these kinds of techniques to really open up your your mind and open up your sense of creativity, it can be useful at any at any scale on any kind of project because it, it just changes the way you think about making your art. So whether you're working on something that's like a pre-existing franchise or you're working on something that's a totally new IP that you can really do anything with, these techniques yeah. will help in either situation. And so uh, that was a question from Randy Higgin. I just want to say thank you for the great question. It's a really excellent uh, yeah, thank point you. and I, I hope that we we answered it sufficiently. Uh, the Tell Productions has another question on here saying, how do you approach having good shape and form where the objects are cohesive and com appealing when combined. And uh, Tell Productions also adds an addendum there about that they do 3D character modeling to rig and animate. So sometimes getting an appealing uh, form from all angles can be pretty tough. Um, do you ever do your designs where, uh, you know, a lot of your uh, things that you're showing here would be straight on from a particular direction? Do you do multiple angles when you do this? Uh, like, how would you address kind of like coming up with a form that looks good from different angles? Very good question. So, um, yes, I'm glad you brought that up. So the whole point of, of this initial process is to get something that everyone is attracted to right off the bat. That's very appealing. Uh, once I get that approved, well, so so for instance, in this perspective, it's top down, right? But I really like the top down. But we're most, I mean, I, I personally prefer to think as far ahead as possible, like to the final stages of like modeling. I'm going to, and also the functionality in the game. I need to know uh, what this thing is going to look like in the most common view. Uh, most likely, we're going to see it from a back uh, view uh, where it's, it's shooting um, at an angle, or we're going to see it from the front. Um, what I'll do is I'll make sure this silhouette is interesting, but I'm always thinking about, like, that's why I did this little doodle on the side. And I I often do this whenever I do, like, a perspective where I can't see everything, just so I know the intention. And when I block things out, or maybe I'll draw things in a different perspective, I'll make sure that it looks really cool at each angle. So even though I'm working on a top, top down view, and you notice how I, I drew these uh, little breaks on, or, or these little spikes on the outside. Maybe they're wheel covers or to, to block the wheels. And because I'm thinking about the profile view as I'm working on the top, top down view, because I want this to look good at every angle possible. And I want to make sure that it's an iconic enough shape, uh, like for this guy right here, like this is going to be a bold shape. And then it's going to be another bold shape. And then it's going to protrude here. It's going to have like some details here. But then this, this is pretty much like the core shape, right? And that's what I'm thinking about. Because when this gets built in 3D, 
it needs to look cool at all different angles. So I'm always staying conscious of that. In the tutorial, I kind of mentioned that there are certain rules that you got to follow when you have a design. Um, and in this case, Canon, this particular Canon, for me, I'm following that reference. I need to make sure it has the wheels, that it can be moved. There's a place for people to push it, uh, a way for people to aim it. And those are the visual cues for people to know how it works. And, and I'm, I'm keeping all those things in mind because it is gonna be handed off and viewed in different perspectives. Long answer. <laughs> a great answer to a great question. Thank you to Vitell Productions for the question. Uh, I, I, you know, we're, we're really getting some great questions on today's show. So thank you everybody for asking yeah, questions and keep them coming. We're, we're here to answer questions. Well, I'm gonna say mostly Lewis is here to answer <laughs> questions. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so to anybody who is just joining the show maybe, um, you know, what you're watching here is we are celebrating the release of Lewis Carrasco's brand new Learn Squared course. Rethinking Weapon Design is the name of the course. It's all about looking into a totally new workflow that you can use to create weapons quickly and extremely creatively. Um, all in, you don't even need to know any 3D uh, and you don't even need to fully draw everything. You're You're using a totally different way of thinking about uh, making weapons. It's it's really uh, extremely fascinating, as you can see on the show here. So uh, we are celebrating the release of that course. You can pick it up right now at learnsquared.com. So go uh, check that out. There's also an early bird discount that's in effect right now. So don't miss that. Make sure you, uh, if you, if you are interested in the course, if you want to pick it up, make sure you do that sooner rather than later. So you can take advantage of that early bird discount. And uh, what we're doing on today's show is Lewis is doing a live demonstration of all the techniques that are available in the course, but this is totally new designs. So these designs do not even appear in the course itself. Um, the designs that you're seeing here are being creative, being created live on camera, and uh, they will actually be uh, recorded. We, you know, he, he's recording this locally, and we're going to add the process videos of these designs to the course later as bonus content. So you'll actually get even more content than pre than currently exists in the course. There's going to be even yeah. more content once we add all this to the uh, to the course as well. So this is really exciting. And it's awesome that Lewis has come in to uh, to do this demo on not one, but now two live streams. So big thanks to Lewis. Yeah. So guys, um, to further explain about what this course is, let's jump over to the course trailer for a second and we'll be right back with more of the demonstration. Don't go anywhere, we got plenty more demo coming up. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real-life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction, cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Guys, you just saw the trailer there again. Rethinking Weapon Design is available now on LearnSquared.com. The course is amazing. Um, in the uh, in the meantime, since since uh, before we went back to the trailer, we have a great question from MT Art. Uh, so thank you, MT Art, for the question and, and welcome to the show. Saying, <clears throat> would you consider this to be an advanced course? I haven't exactly dabbled into weapon design, but this looks awesome. And uh, that's a great question. Thank you for asking it. It's uh, the way that we think about it, you will certainly become advanced 
by the end of the course, but uh, you do not need to have advanced knowledge to start the course off. And there's a lot of things that are going to help you to really get into this mindset. Lewis goes into a lot of detail about how to utilize these techniques that you're seeing on the stream and that you see used for these weapons that were created on screen. Um, he goes into how to uh, really search for the best reference, how to you know, pick the artists that inspire your designs, how to you know, make sure that technically all your reference looks good or bad, showing very clear examples like uh, you saw a little bit of it in the trailer where it's, there's like screens that are specifically showing like this kind of reference is better than this kind of reference and you know, really specifically showing that. And then uh, there's even, it even goes as far as having like templates that you can follow to start out in the earlier lessons so that when you are, feel comfortable with that, you can move up to doing a full wep weapon in the various different styles. So uh, in order to start the course, I would say that you could be a beginner at weapon design and you would totally be totally fine. Would you say that that's true, Lewis? You know, I would say that the the intention of the tutorial was to help anyone that is starting out, struggles with their portfolio. So so just to kind of give you an idea of where I'm coming from is I struggled a lot when I was a young artist and I didn't know where to start. You know, there's so many tutorials out there and they all were pretty advanced for me. <clears throat> and I would sit down and I would I would follow the tutorial and I would pretty much mimic whatever they made. But after the tutorial, the only thing I could come out with, I mean, I always gained something out of it, but I would never go to my portfolio and start making a bunch of really cool images. I would just kind of repeat the tutorial. So I really wanted to make something that spoke to uh, young artists or experienced artists that aren't that are excited to work on their portfolio, but have a habit of recreating the same thing they've made a million times like I did and jump into it and just be really excited to, to design like a cannon or something like that and giving yourself freedom to explore. And then eventually you just realize how powerful you actually are because I was never, I really was never good at drawing and it took me a long time to kind of understand that. Um, and I was really never good at using it reference. And I didn't know how to understand, I didn't understand how to apply any of the techniques I was learning uh, to what I was doing. So that's why in this tutorial, we really simplify, I really simplified things. And I even go over how I'm using Photoshop, the way you guys are looking at it right now. I go over that because I know that's challenging. And I try to keep things as simple as possible. So that way you can be excited about uh, using the techniques on your own and demos like I'm doing right now are different from the tutorial because I want you to walk away feeling confident that you could tackle anything that you can think of. So yeah, it, it's a very beginner friendly course. Uh, and that applies to, because we, you know, MTR is, uh, hasn't dabbled into weapon design, but even if you're already experienced with other aspects of art or production or anything like that, uh, this will still work uh, as like, you know, this will teach you a new workflow. It's totally beginner friendly if you've never done weapon design before. It's even beginner friendly if you don't know that much about, you know, 2D art creation in general. Like, you know, you, yeah. you don't need that many um, 2D art creation fundamentals. It, it really comes all the way from the beginning of the process to the end. So... There's really a lot, it's something for everybody. Like somebody who knows, yeah. even somebody who's already an experienced weapon designer would get a lot from this course because they're learning a totally different workflow that's gonna speed up the way that they make their stuff and that's gonna totally change the way that they make their stuff. So yeah, it's, it, it is a pretty remarkable uh, set of techniques that as I was watching through it, I was like <laughs> totally blown away. So I, I know that you guys will be too. I'm really excited to see what everybody creates from this course. It's going to be amazing. Me too. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited. Yeah. So I hope that's answered answered your question, MT Art. Uh, this is a course that is totally friendly to beginners of weapon design. Uh, we have a few more questions in the chat. So uh, once yeah. again, thanks to everybody for the great questions on today's show. It's really uh, it's really nice to see everybody so excited about the course. So. Um, 
it's a really another really excellent question from X Vista Style X. And uh, welcome to the show, by the way, X Vista Style X. Uh, Vista Style uh, saying, after doing a top down view of these beautiful weapons, how can we create them in perspective? And so that's another really interesting question that, uh, you know, Lewis does talk about a little bit in the course as well. Can you talk about sort of your process after you've created this uh, sort of a visual of a weapon? Where, where does it go from here in terms of uh, in terms of workflow and pipeline? So for me personally, like I mentioned, I am just not a draftsman and uh, and I'm OK with that. I'd rather focus on design because I'm a concept artist. I really want to be focused on designing because that that was never I mean, that's not really taught in schools. I mean, every now and then you'll get lucky with a great teacher that can teach you how to think about design. Uh, what I eventually realized is that I enjoyed 3D. Like in ZBrush, I could just create a shape. I wouldn't have to model it. I could just sculpt out a shape that mimicked the lighting. So uh, see how this is just some rent, some cylindrical shape. That that could be the front of my cannon. I just needed the light. Um, so what, what I would do is, see the whole reason why I'm creating, so the reason why this is looking janky at the bottom is because I'm trying to inform my, I, I'm actually treating this like an actual assignment for a job. I didn't mean to, to draw in, in a profile view, but um, I just need to know certain things. Okay, this is a sphere. So I'm gonna block that out in ZBrush. And this whole shape is, is also a sphere that I can block out in ZBrush. And I, I just need to know exactly what shapes I need to sculpt out in ZBrush to get it to look correctly. And then what I'll do is I'll render them out in uh, perspective. I'll have a, uh, I mean, it depends. If, if you can draw really well, I'll just pretty much block out all these basic shapes, uh, render out a particular perspective in ZBrush and then draw on top of it or paint on top of it or add photo textures. Um, because all the design work is done, for those of you that know 3D, you can see all the basic shapes that are here. Just go into ZBrush or whatever program and and block out all these basic shapes, and you'll have your Canon design. And that's and that's what I've used to to complete these. Yeah, and it's it's great to to know that like so. Just to be clear for anybody who is uh, watching the show, you don't need to actually know any. ZBrush or other 3D software to do the course. Um, that's something that you can do if you want to, like, you know, get a full full uh, view of your design without, you know, doing more sketches or 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 more uh, images. But like, with with this course, what you're going to be able to do is the step in the process where you are just really quickly coming up with these designs that will inform you know, other aspects of the pipeline. So, you know, you'll be able to create all these things that you can then, to your heart's desire, turn into f other versions at, or, you know, make another silhouette and apply it to that, like Lewis did on the left side with that uh, profile view of the canon, or, or turn it into 3D if you choose. But this course is really going to help you to master this aspect where you're, you're coming up with that design phase of these weapons. AKA, I suppose, to rethink your weapon designs. <laughs> I knew yeah, which, we got some pretty smart people coming up with these titles, huh? <laughs> which is like, honestly, when it comes to the other applications, I mean, there are tutorials that where it's pretty much black and white on how to use the applications, right? You just got to spend time and, and watch them. The hardest thing throughout my career and you know, you'll, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced it or, or feeling it when you work in portfolios, coming up with the design to be excited about is really, really difficult. So that's why this tutorial it can really free you up to uh, start filling out your portfolio with cool designs and just focus on that and, and everything else. So in my opinion, at least there's enough tutorials out there where you can get down the 3D pretty quickly. If, if you decide to go that route. But I, I think the design process is one of the hardest things uh, for me. I hope that's answered your question, X, this style X. And thank you so much for the question. It's a great question. Yeah. Randy Higgin saying, I need to work on some shield designs. I like that. I love to hear about people's projects, shield designs. That's certainly still 
I guess technically a shield is a do you call it a weapon? It's like a defensive yeah, thing, yeah. but I it's... could do a shield now. Should we do a shield now? Would that would that kill? Oh, okay. It? Yeah. <laughs> that well, all right, awesome. Thank you, Randy Higgin, uh, for the uh, the suggestion. But um, yeah, it's it, the interesting thing about the course is that you can really go as like far outside of the weapon design idea as you want. Like you know, right now we're when you think of like, oh, I'm going to do a weapon design. You might originally think like, okay, what's well, something you can hold in your hand, like a, a sword, and a, a a sword, a gun, you know, some kind of weapon. We did a grenade, grenade on the previous one, but weapons yeah. also extends to like we're doing here, huge weapons like cannons. Um, it extends to tiny, you know, things. It extends to, you know, all different kinds of things. And uh, shield, of course, also applies. So um, these techniques will really carry over to any class of uh you know weapon or weapon adjacent thing that you want to create i love yeah, the the silhouette phase is always really fascinating to me yeah right so it was exciting yeah it's my favorite part too uh we have mt art who asked a excellent question earlier saying i really appreciate this from you guys i'm excited we appreciate you mt art yeah and yeah thanks, thanks for, for being, being here. here what is that thing that is in your uh references there that that like uh, green thing that you just had selected. This guy, I have no idea, but the light, see all the basic shapes. That's that's what I'm attracted to. I actually have no idea what I grabbed. <laughs> all I saw was like, hey, this lighting is not blown out and like the gradients look nice. So yeah, I think it'll work. That's all you need. You don't need to know what it is. You just need yeah. to know it looks cool. So let's see, shield. So, I mean, there's no brief, right? So I'm, I'm just going to kind of uh, grab stuff that I think looks cool. That's the beauty of a live broadcast, ladies and gentlemen. We can switch things up, add things to the to the docket on the spot. This is, it, we weren't planning to add any shield yeah, designs on today's show, but... <laughs> Hey, it's awesome that we are. All right. So again, the goal is just to uh, see things, like looking at the clouds. Actually, I may not use this reference because it looks too close to a, to a shield. Looking at the clouds is an interesting, uh, interesting analogy to make as well because you mentioned it in the course too and i think it's really profound that like what your your workflow in a nutshell is similar to the ability to when you're sitting you know on your back on the grass looking up at the sky and identifying like oh that cloud looks like a dinosaur that cloud looks like whatever like the the ability to see shapes and imagine what it could be is exactly a major part of this so there there really is kind of like a an aspect of this workflow that sort of brings you back to being a kid. Or I don't know, people could look at clouds at any time, but I know I did that a lot when I was a kid. So let's see. Let's see what we could find. Okay. So now when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to figure out, oh, maybe this is like some kind of riot shield or something like that. And maybe this part here, we can blow this up a little bit. And this is where like, the person behind it can like look through it you know what i mean okay like a little uh yeah a little window wow so that way you know when they're shielding themselves they can just see what's going on and the lighting is really helping me uh figure this out too And so one of the things that you um, take advantage of in the course and also that people are seeing you do right right there was uh, just kind of extending the texture further outwards, but at the same time, not worrying too much about making sure that it's like the exact same, you know, like cloning the exact texture to make sure that it like matches 100%. Like, and that, that sort of speaks to the speed of this workflow where um, what you did a second ago was to just pretty much just like sample the color of an area and just like extend it out and it gets you 
all the way there without having to like spend all the extra time like you know bogging yourself down in the details yeah you know like I, I don't notice it at this point because I, I do it so much but a lot of it's because I noticed if I if I drew something in it looked like I drew something in and it, it wouldn't fit the rest of it and I really feel like I'm kind of chiseling something out that's already there and and I just feel like it looks so much cleaner when I when I just use a, a photo texture to describe what it is that I want to draw. It is really fascinating. Yeah, it's a uh, like you're basically you're you're creating an environment where creativity can spawn more easily. Like you're you're making uh, something where patterns present themselves to you rather than having to like you know labor over it and like sort of like force the pattern to appear it's just yeah. like so quickly allowing patterns to show up and and then being able to like just have your pick of like all these different things and and just really quickly iterate it's fascinating so, so I, oh sorry go ahead go ahead go ahead well, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining the program here, we have a special little uh, moment that's happening right now, which isn't even on the docket for the show, but I love that it's happening. Uh, Lewis is actually, uh, at first, creating all different kinds of weapons, and still is creating all different kinds of, of weapons for our live demonstration today to show the techniques of his new course, Rethinking Weapon Design, which is available now. This course just came out today. It's available now at LearnSquared.com. You can find it uh, right on the website if you go over there right now. And thanks to the suggestion of Randy Higgin in the chat, Lewis is now inspired to come up with a shield design in addition to the uh, designs for cannon weapons that uh, were being done earlier on the show. So it's pretty amazing that we have all this Ooh. stuff happening on... Uh, today's broadcast and uh, just show some love in that chat for Lewis, who's really going not only the extra mile by coming in for another stream, but then going another extra mile by <laughs> doing a whole other set of, of designs on the show here. It's amazing. Yeah, I just want, I want you all to see that the technique can really be applied to anything. We have... Uh, a couple of people in the chat, uh, uh, Tanapri Ranjan saying, so I'm guessing basically that when you are doing characters that you might use this process to make different parts like a chest piece <clears throat> or a helmet or something else separately, or would you do the entire character at once? And that's a good point because this technique can apply to characters and, and armor and, and things like that. But um, we've we've been talking exclusively about weapons here. But uh, if you are designing like a larger thing that involves multiple aspects, how do you kind of break those down, Lewis? Um, so very good question. Yeah, it, de it definitely does get um, more complicated because it's hard to understand without a visual guide uh, when I explain it to you all. But essentially, I, I do kind of the same thing. But once I have my character silhouette and... Um, or maybe I'll have just like a, a default kind of gray character um, that that's dark, kind of like this, like the silhouettes I have here. I'll I'll bring in a photo texture like this and hover over the whole thing and lower the opacity, so I can start figuring out what garments uh, the character needs. Um, I let the photo texture decide if like this is going to be uh, the chest piece on the character. And then maybe like the way it lands on the character, like there's there's going to be some kind of metal collar on on the character's neck, and um, the the chest piece sticks out far enough to create the shadow or something like that. And it really gives me this freedom to <clears throat> just like this method where I can start seeing all these exotic shapes and explaining them. So it tells me if it if the character has like. A long robe or anything like that or anything specific that i need to design but uh i don't really section out the characters i let the photo textures kind of help me see it 
same method, same exact method, but it gets way more complicated. <laughs> That's why I stuck to a uh, weapon design because if you get this method down, uh, hopefully you'll you'll see how it applies to characters also and everything else that you do, whether it be uh, environments, you know, let's say you're designing a building like this. If you if you watch this tutorial, I'm pretty confident you'll know how to uh, design a building like this. Um, that's very much the reason why the method is just weapons right now. There you go. The world is your oyster. If you know these yeah. techniques, you can do anything. Yeah. And it's a great question. I really appreciate uh, the question, uh, Tom Priranjan. Thank you for asking it. Uh, we have Misha Ye in the chat. Welcome, Misha Ye, uh, saying, I've just made my first three daggers today. Great course, Lewis. Hey, congrats. Awesome. I can't wait to see him. It's really cool that uh, that you have already completed the uh, first lesson of the course, and we're excited to check that out. Uh, make sure that you post your, uh, your homework on there. We'd love to see it. Yeah, well, maybe... I'm definitely excited, yeah. The course, um, a a as we're talking about here, uh, Misha Ye has mentioned making their first three daggers. The course is right now available on the Learn Squared site. So uh, Misha has already gone in there and gotten a head start and uh, and done that first lesson already. And uh, it's, that's amazing. You, you guys, anybody who is um, interested in designing their own weapons, you can uh, you can do the same. You can get on there and and uh, and start making those. There's all sorts of possibilities. As you can see here, it, there's no limit to the kinds of things that you can create. You can go as far outside the realm of uh, things that we already have seen as possible. And I think that's kind of like a specialty of yours, Lewis, is to really just kind of venture outside of what we've seen before. Yeah, absolutely. Like I I'm working on version two of this shield because I'm, I'm running out of space on the canvas, but usually, you know, you'll see in the tutorial, I'll, copy, you know, before I do a big detail, I'll copy this over because I don't want to be destructive and I want to keep exploring. Then I'll create a second version um, using some reference and and it's just so fun. You could just keep going and really pushing the idea like, okay, this is a shield uh, with, with this photo reference on top. Like, what am I seeing? Like, what is this? How, how do I explain this? Maybe this these three lines are the logo that represents this uh group that has these riot shields i don't know and and you know with the lighting now changed i can start to figure out uh, more about this design too we have a, a lot of great questions coming in and again thank you to everybody for asking these great questions um the tell production saying they say i saw the angle in the marble and i carved until i set her free that's pretty much exactly what Lewis is doing. <laughs> yeah, that's that's exactly what's going on pretty much, yeah. Um, so Gerald Ballesteros asking another good question. Can we expand these things uh, to add other, like how far does it extend for the types of textures you can do? So Gerald is interested in doing like animal hide, animal skin uh, textures and all, all sorts of other things. Like it's a good point that uh, a lot of weapons tend to be hard surface. Um, can you extend this to things that are a little bit uh, softer? Sorry, can you give me a better description on like what kind of weapons you're thinking of? That's a good point. I think that uh, part of it might just be adding like maybe a like uh, animal skin or like, uh, like maybe leather or some, some kind of other texture to the outer part of it. Like it, like just a material change. I think so. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, and those. Mo so usually, I I uh, would wait to like the very end of a design before I started to. I hope I'm answering your question right. So, if this were to be like some kind of animal hide out here, um, well, I mean, I would do something very crazy. What what I would do is I would grab. Um, I would grab. And do I have anything like that? Let's see. Let's see. One second. I would grab like before I, I started grabbing direct reference, which I mentioned a lot in the tutorial. Direct reference is when you grab something very specific to be placed. 
uh, what I would do is I would grab like the mouth of uh, a dog or whatever, you know, a baboon or something like that. And I would um, just stretch it over um, the uh, the thing I was designing um, to also, t I mean, tell, tell a unique story. So the second I start informing this design, and sorry, this is like such a low risk photo, but uh, it starts creating a story. So it's like, okay, why are these teeth here? And what creature could have create well, what creature has these teeth on it? and it starts really uh sparking the curiosity of everyone looking at it right because like on the shield why are these giant teeth on the side of uh the shield and then you know i could put animal hide and stuff like that or or maybe these aren't teeth maybe they're tusks from um an elephant or something like that right you could really the the whole idea of the method is that you're never limited you're still applying the method constantly you never stop and if you have specific areas that have specific material yeah we could add like animal fur here and and that'll be specific but we could still be creative and say that it was stitched onto this tusk somehow yeah so i i think um if if we if you had a different aspect of your question and we didn't answer it, then let us know. But I, I think that's uh, what uh, they were asking about. So I hope that has answered your question. And yeah, uh, I hope so, yeah. yeah it, what's really interesting about this workflow is just that it applies to pretty much every type of texture that you could think of. And, and it allows you to use the texture to inform the shape of your weapon and then use the shape to inform the texture and just keep going in a circle with that. Uh, until you have like this amazing refined design. Uh, it's it's really like a, a process. Lewis described it in the previous show and also in the course itself as like a, a competition between the different weapon designs to like make the coolest one and keep keep making it cooler every time. Yeah, like this shield is now in competition with like this shield. And then what I'll do is if this one wins, I'm going to go back to this shield and make it way cooler than this shield. But I mean, these are just roughed in, but I hope you can see that already our idea of a shield has been surpassed. Like the what you would have thought of before is, I mean, I don't even need to look for an example. I'm sure you can all picture maybe two shields, a right shield, because that's what I said, and a shield that a Viking would use, right? Which is circular, or it could be this kind of uh, police shield shape, right? But pushing our imagination, you start to really come up with a story and something that no one has seen before. So the second you show that to the team or you show it in your portfolio, you stand out way far ahead than anything that you see on ArtStation or any of these other platforms. I challenge you, have, have any of you seen a canon uh, that looks like this? Maybe something close, right, if we really tried? or shields that look like this in any property, right? Maybe, but you're really gonna have to dig. And and the, these are all the results of the last hour. So, so that's why I really wanted to create a tutorial that emphasized design and gave you all the opportunity to have fun with your imagination and, and to see shapes. Because how excited would you be to show this off in your portfolio? You saw something in the clouds that no one else saw, right? That's the idea. It's amazing. And and to anybody who's just joining the show today, what we're doing here is celebrating the launch of Lewis Carrasco's brand new Learn Squared course called Rethinking Weapon Design. As you can see on your screens here, Lewis is doing a live demonstration showing all different kinds of ways to uh, create new weapons and then ways to iterate on those weapons to create even more new weapons. So uh, just really, really rapidly uh, creating and iterating and just making really, really cool things. As you can see right here, he's actually, it looks like he's going to take some of the shield <laughs> design and turn it into the cannon. Love it's it. now a cannon. Yeah, it's now a cannon. Thanks. thanks. Anything goes. <laughs> but um, you guys can find the course on the Learn Squared web website right now. It is now available. And um, 
that is gonna have the early bird discount in effect as well. So anybody who wants to pick up the course, make sure you do it sooner rather than later. That's that's my uh, discount, that's my uh, tip to you guys because the early bird discount is in effect right now. So it is gonna be a nice little, uh, nice little bit of uh, money off. So yeah. check that out. Lewis's course is on the Learn Squared site and we are gonna jump over to the trailer to tell you a little bit more about the course, a little more than I could tell you. So uh, go take a look at that trailer and make sure you get your questions ready. We've had some excellent questions on today's show. Anybody who wants to know anything about the course, about the workflow, about Lewis's uh, professional uh, career or advice, make sure you post it in the chat. So uh, get your questions ready and we'll be right back with more demonstration. It's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction, cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com. Ladies and gentlemen, Rethinking Weapon Design, as you saw there in the trailer, the course is available now on the Learn Squared site. It just came out today. We're celebrating celebrating that new course release so uh get excited go to that learn squared site either now or when the show is over check it out for yourselves and uh you know we have been uh you know doing this celebration by having lewis on the show and 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 really just create all these amazing demonstrations of how to use these techniques live on air so um thank you to everybody who's asked all these great questions on today's show we have a couple more questions so i do want to get cool. these in there so Let's say to Richard Sarsonis, uh, asking a great question as well. Can we uh, use this technique to create, instead of a top view, to create a three quarters view of a weapon? Or let's extend that to, you know, any view that you wanted to do. Would you be able to create a different view of the weapon that you're trying to create? So very good question. So the reason why I, I work this way, <clears throat> so one one thing that you'll learn is if you're working um i'm assuming you draw uh if you do draw then if you were assigned uh, a cannon here here's what you would go through and i'm sure you feel this when you're working too you would have to understand the depth of your cannon right and the wheels you'd have to get those down and then you would have to figure them out in perspective draw draw your vanishing point right that all that good stuff um, but here's what happens. You right now you're not designing. Right now you're trying to get the perspective correct. So let's say you get the pers the perspective and everything perfect, right? What happens is you begin to really limit your imagination because what are you gonna do when you start laying in uh photo textures, right? So let's say I'm gonna use this. Oop. Let me Cut this in half really quick. I'm sure you all feel this when you work, but because you're thinking a lot while you're working. So if you lower the opacity, like I've been showing you guys, here's what happens. This is a flat image. Even if you were to find something in the right perspective, you're going to have to figure out how to get this image to fit in perspective correctly onto your drawing that's in perspective. Um, you might be able to get some things out of it, but the entire time you're trying to draw everything at the correct perspective. 
and you end up burning yourself out because you're just trying to draw correctly. And what happens usually, you know, you'll get critiqued on the perspective. And then when that happens, you're just burned out. You're completely burned out. So the whole point of this is to save time, save as much time uh, and give yourself as much uh, wiggle room in terms of design. So this shield, for instance, all we did was lay in some photo textures. We painted on top of it. So that way we have the basic idea of what the shield looks like. Maybe at the most, I'll draw this a little doodle on the side for myself or for the team. Uh, so that way they know what my intention is. And I'll draw like a little like a, a little guy holding the shield or something like that. I mean, I'll do a better, jo better job of it, right? But I save time and I just give an impression of what the shield's supposed to look like. And it's fully designed. It's, it, it makes complete sense when you, I mean, this is very rough, but it'll make enough sense visually when you finish the painting. Uh, then uh, you'll either have the opportunity to, to take this design and draw it in perspective, or maybe part of your process is starting here and then you draw it in perspective. Because the last thing you want is to do both at the same time. Because you, I, I mean, maybe you're you're one of those uh, people that can do it all. Um, I would get so tired because remember, you have to do like two or three designs, and you have to turn those in. And what if they want you to do another round the next day? Then you have to come up with a, an original design. And for me, what ended up happening is I became so tired that I would start just doing kind of like simpler designs because I would get so tired. I would get a lot of feedback. I'd have to address the notes. And you kind of start to lose trust in the designer if they're constantly having to like redo the work and it's becoming simpler and simpler and simpler just because they're getting burned out from drawing in perspective all the time. Yes, yeah, so it is a it's an interesting point that like the part of the speed and efficiency of this process is in doing it, uh doing the weapons in a way that allows you to only focus on the actual, you know, sort of like design of the thing itself or the the texturing of the thing itself. And then, you know, once you have that figured out, you can then add a perspective version of it and use the same techniques to apply that. But it becomes easier to add these to a perspective shot of the same weapon if you already know what the design is going to look like. Exactly. You know, make make it easy on yourself, right? That's the goal. And and you'll learn that uh, as you get more experience. Um, or maybe you didn't know, like I did for so many years, and you start realizing like, hey, I need a I need a faster way to think before I start committing to these like big, big uh, jobs. And so to um, just to answer it in a in a word, then I guess to Richard Sarasonas, who had a great question and to Damas Draws, who have just asked a similar question right now. Uh, who Thomas asked, do you develop this further into three quarter view or 3D concept? Uh, the answer is yes, you can use this technique to do a three quarter view. But uh, the idea is you want to do it straight on first so that all you have to worry about is the design process. And then once you figured out the design, the next part of the workflow would be to add those views and add other other views uh, once you've solved the the biggest problem, which is what does the design actually involve um exactly, and so hopefully yeah. the all the uh those aspects of the answers answer your guys questions i think i think it would uh randy yeah. hagan saying there are a lot of guys who are good at drawing form but not good with applying texture and they just rely on other sort of methods and this method really helps in exploring forms and textures at once and exactly I, yeah that is a part of this course that really excites me that um yeah, the, the way that it's it's constantly a trade between which thing is in the spotlight and then whichever one is in the spotlight is informing the other one and then that's going back and it's going forth and back and forth. And yeah, it's really, it's doing both of those very important things all at the same time. And- yeah, uh, Oops, sorry. Oh, no, go ahead. <laughs> No, yeah, exactly. And and that's why I was really excited to show this off because you're you're answering so many questions at once. Um, the design is the hardest part, but if you could answer some of the texturing questions, then what could happen is 
if something gets approved right away, you just saved everyone so much time because they know what it looks like and it looks fairly realistic. Um, if they want you to kind of touch it up a little bit more, you can do that. I mean, in the tutorial, we kind of go over how to like finish everything. Um, it gets handed off to like a 3D modeler and then the texture artist has a stab at it. And, you know, usually they come up with something better anyway, but at least there's a guideline. So what's great is that you're really creating these conversation pieces for your team that answer so many questions rather than, you know, a flat 2D drawing of a shield or, you know, something like this, right? It doesn't matter how much detail you draw in, you know, we actually don't know what it feels like or what it's gonna look like, right? But if the whole team can expedite their process, you can build a prototype much faster, especially those of you that, you know, are interested in 3D. If you can block out a 3D prototype of this cannon or shield, you just save production so much time and headaches also. So, you know, it's definitely a useful process. Um, a few people in the chat saying, just saying thank you for answering the questions really well. <laughs> Uh, John oh, yeah, Bonastera sure. saying, thank you so much for answering my question. Much appreciated. It was the exact question and perfect answer. Uh, Dama Straw is saying, thank you. Richard uh, Sarsona is saying, thank you for answering my question. That's quite an yeah. insight about the, uh, you know, choosing not to do the three-quarter view first. It's quite an insight. The goal is to lay faster initial designs. I think I'll incorporate that into my workflow. Thank you very much. Yeah, please do that. Um, you know, whenever I've looked at por portfolios or friends and I will look at portfolios, we actually rarely see anyone attempting to do design work. A lot of the time we see people doing um, just straight going for the render and often because they skip the design phase, it just looks like what you've seen a million times. Like yeah, we've seen that orc, <laughs> you know, we've seen that giant hammer that that orc is holding. But if you apply this method uh, from the tutorial, I promise you, whatever you come up with, is going to be dramatically different than what anyone has thought of. And I know a lot of you are probably thinking about it right now and how to apply it to your own techniques. And that's what's so exciting. So there you go, ladies and gents. It's going to revolutionize the way that you create your weapons, the way that you create your, you know, shields, your armor, anything that you really want to do. This this can change the way that you make art uh and 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 totally allow you to think outside the box and that goes all the way from the you know the earliest beginner to somebody who's already been doing art even somebody who's already been you know professionally doing weapon design this can help anybody uh across the board um so there's one last question here and you know yeah. we're running a little bit out of time but i'll we'll squeeze in this last question here from gerald ballesteros who asked okay. a great question before uh in this technique, uh, is there ever a time when you just hit a wall or a creative block or feel that you are kind of like repeating the same idea over and over again? And if so, how do you break yourself out of that? How do you get past that? I will show you guys right now exactly what I do, because that's that's why this technique is so important. Uh, it's really important to me to show you all how to do it. Uh, because it's it's what I use to get excited about working on my portfolio. Because when I sit down, I do not know what to do. I have zero clue. I don't have any kind of rough idea of what I'm going to do. So here's what I'll do. I know I'm going to make some kind of canon thing. And sometimes my silhouettes will suck. You know, I, I don't necessarily like the silhouette. But my goal isn't to impress myself right now or anyone else. So what I'm going to do is avoid grabbing any direct reference. And again, I, I know I've said it a million times, but uh, I, I direct reference is like grabbing a cannon barrel for the front or wheels for, for you know the wheels that belong on here. I'm going to find something that does not belong. Okay, I'm gonna grab this helmet. I seriously have no idea what, what's gonna come out of this. So hopefully it's a good example. <laughs> Somehow so, it always is. Yeah, well, yeah, let's see. <laughs> Something um, tells me it will be. So, yeah, I'm going to lower the opacity a little bit. And, like, again, like I'm looking at the clouds outside, what do I see? I can already see the back end of my uh, cannon. Right? And it's giving me a sense of depth. And I'm like, oh, you know what? Maybe the wheels are in the center. Oh, maybe the wheels kind of look flat because... 
it could have like let's let's see like that's the wheel but they have kind of like this weird um blade on the outside but you know even further maybe i could do one where like it's kind of serrated like that that's what i'm imagining for this area right here like those are the wheels but we're looking at it top down and it's like okay let's see Oh, did that by accident, but maybe this is meant to shoot out um like an like a javelin or something, or like you know, this giant maybe this is like to shoot down dragons. Maybe those aren't wheels. These are the wheels on the outside. And this is like some crazy sci-fi, you know, world where they have dragons and they need something to shoot down. A dragon. And you, and you see what's going on? And I'm sure you all are looking at this and you're seeing six different ideas that I haven't even mentioned. This is and now, really yeah, actually right. incredible to see you yeah. like ideating like this so many different times. It's like, you know, the it is pretty difficult to come up with so many ideas. And the, the way that you're doing this, like almost like it's nothing, like you're you're coming up with it like oh yeah i just came up with this like you know this totally different thing like in two seconds like that's really really impressive and it speaks to really how much this workflow can truly change the way that people make their their content yeah um i just i just really want you all to focus on your designs and just have fun, have a good relationship with your portfolios, be excited for, you know, I know you're all excited to work in this industry and to be concept artists or, or 3D models or whatever it is, but your portfolios are always like a hard thing to like do. But once you start really letting yourself explore, like, look, I, I'm not trying to be correct in, in the way I'm using this photo reference. I'm just, I don't know, like, like I said a bunch of times, I'm just trying to see what's in the clouds, you know, by doing this. And and now I'm like, dude, if I, if I built this in 3D using ZBrush, I already created something that is not on ArtStation. I promise you. There you go, ladies and gents. Make stuff that's not on ArtStation. That is a <laughs> a, a, a great uh, tagline. Maybe I'll, we might steal that. <laughs> we'll use that for the course. <laughs> yeah. That's what everybody wants, is to be able to make something that's truly not been seen before. And it, yeah. you know, it's a really hard thing to do. So. I think that you've demonstrated that you, many times over at this point between today's demo and the last demo that we did when we announced the course, like you have demonstrated live in front of everybody that you can do that consistently. Uh, that is really, really amazing. Um, Damas Draw is saying, I'm sold. I'm getting the course right now. Oh, that great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see what you all come up with and really pay attention to the photo textures I've used in all these demos. Like there's a reason why, um, you know, Nick here uh, suggested that we, you know, give a little bit of variety so that way you guys could see, like, I mean, I, I just used a helmet, like a random helmet that I found to create the outside of this, uh, you know, this cannon. And yeah, and, and that's what's so fun about it, right? You're just having fun. You could do like a million of these and your por your portfolio is like getting so full. <laughs> it's really incredible. And, and thank you so much again to Lewis for coming on the show and, and doing this amazing demo. Can we get some love for Lewis in the chat here while we close the show out? I'm going to post a heart in that chat as well. Uh, it's really incredible. Not only that, Lewis has created this amazing course uh and then he has uh, given his time to us to do these live demonstrations for free on youtube uh to really just show you guys the techniques and and inspire you and and help you learn so uh you know i am speechless at seeing all this stuff and i, I it really means a lot that you came on to to do this so thank you lewis yeah for sure thanks for having me thanks everyone for uh coming by and all the questions too yeah, these are all incredible questions that everyone's been asking. It's it's so highly appreciated that you guys, uh, you know, are are so active in the Learn Squared community. There, there's always incredible homework, and you know, the the community is always so positive. Um, you know, we're all artists, and sometimes it can feel, you know, it can be pretty competitive as, yeah. as a uh, yeah. 
an artist who's trying to be recognized among a, a bunch of other artists. And it's at the end of the day, uh, you know, they always say that like a high tide rises all boats and, you know, it's, it's, it's great to support one another instead of, you know, just kind of like taking people down or being negative. And I think what's great about the Learn Squared community is that everybody's so talented and everybody's also so supportive of each other. So thank you everybody for being great and for asking great questions on today's show. Um, we have uh, another couple of great uh, appreciative comments. Randy Higgins saying, I think everybody on Learn Squared needs to get this course because it turbocharges the ideation process. Right, Gerald yeah, Ballesteros saying, wow, that was fast. Uh, who I had asked the question that uh, inspired you to make this, uh, this new design here. Gerald saying, wow, that was fast. Thank you very much for reading my questions and taking the time to answer. And for much sure. love from the Philippines. Oh, hey, yeah, thanks for joining. We have uh, a lot of hearts coming in on the chat uh, from Gerald Barlesteros from Vitell Productions saying, well done with a heart. Damas Draws with a heart. X, uh, X Vis Style X saying, I just love how you solve our design and our you, all of your design problems and all of the problems of ideation at the same time. It's like everything at once. It, all our design problems and all of our thought process. It's, it's the full package, this course. And uh, so I guess we're going to let's take out the show here. Do you want to um, do a quick kind of overview, Lewis, of what uh, of what has been uh, created on today's program? Yeah. So, um, you know, I I'm, went over my process for creating props. And, and in this case, we went over cannons. We did a little shield work and. Yeah, the the whole I guess the whole thing about it, like you want me to talk about like the whole thing. <laughs> I'm not sure. If you, well, uh, if you just want to show off the different designs that you made. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man, one thing you guys will learn about uh, me is my Photoshop layers are a hot mess. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, coming up with uh, cannons like in a top view, right? The simplest view possible, and then gave myself a little like this doesn't really represent what this cannon could look like but it's informing me of like the basic shape of what it could be and uh yeah and just going into different genres right like something that would belong more in a halo game or something like that um and then the shield we're using it to kind of go into a realm of like maybe something medieval you know something gothic um just giving you guys a lot of options and showing you how you can come up with a variety of ideas in a short amount of time and so we got even more appreciation in the comments there. Uh, we have Cornelius Cockroft saying, class looks great. It's cool to see what you've been up to. Richard Sarasona saying, thank you. Everybody's really appreciative here. And uh, I know I'm also appreciative. So guys, the course is called Rethinking Weapon Design. You can see the URL uh, down at the bottom of your screen there. Go uh, check out the course yourselves. It is available as of today at LearnSquared.com. Also, uh, we'll, we'll put a put, uh, URL in the chat as well so you guys can click that and go directly to the course. It's available right now. You're going to get an early bird discount as well. So if you're thinking about the course, now's the best time to grab it. Lewis has come in to do a live demonstration and show you all the techniques of the course. This YouTube video will be available after the show as well uh, so that you can watch the uh, everything that happened and, and rewind and, and listen to the interview and everything uh, again and again. And in addition, the course itself is going to have the full process video of this demonstration, you know, without all of our editing and, and uh, extra things and cutaways and graphics, just the full unedited process video is going to be available in the course itself. So we're going to add that in. And you'll be able to really just inspect everything that has happened on today's show frame by frame if you want to. Um, so there's just a lot of content in the course. There's so much knowledge uh, that is in the course and you've seen the results and you're seeing them on your screen right now. We're looking at the final pictures that came out of the course as well. You're seeing the results that will come when you take this course. So go check it out yourselves, guys. Rethinking Weapon Design is available now at LearnSquared.com. Now, once again, thank you, Lewis, and yeah. let's take it out. Let's head back to the trailer. All right, thanks, guys. Can't wait to see what you guys create. 
it's time to rethink your weapon designs. In this new Learn Squared course, concept designer Luis Carrasco will take you on a whirlwind tour through his unique weapon creation process. By creating unexpected shapes from real life textures, you'll learn to see your designs in entirely new ways, build in gorgeous detail, and create a beautiful concept. Not only do you not need to know 3D for this technique, you don't even need to be an expert at drawing. It's all based on creating abstraction, cutting out shapes and overlaying. It sounds too good to be true, but this method has helped Lewis to create weapons, characters, and creatures for huge projects like Jungle Cruise, Star Citizen, A Quiet Place, Ready Player One, and more. And because the underlying techniques are so simple, anyone, from an absolute beginner to a seasoned concept artist, will finish this course with the ability to create fast, innovative weapon designs. Sign up today and begin your journey at LearnSquare.com.